Hi, um, so today I'm going to um, finish with cascading style sheets. This is the second CSS lecture. Uh, namely, I'll talk about CSS level 3 features uh, and I'll show you a bunch of examples at the end. Also, at the end, I'm going to talk about, uh, I'm going to present, I'm going to quickly present um, one of the most uh, popular CSS and JavaScript frameworks, namely Bootstrap. Uh, but first, it's time for some, for some announcements. Um, please look at the course's webpage and do refreshes and uh, visit it quite frequently because I'm going to post um, I'm going to post announcement here. Um, first, uh, the first announcement um, is the fact that since the suspension period at our university has prolonged, uh, we have no way than to uh, we have no other way than to try to um, take the labs from you from the students online using online tools. So we'll start doing this next week. Uh, we will probably use Skype or Microsoft Teams, but I will post an announcement on the course's webpage uh, tomorrow or on Sunday about the way that you can use in order to show us uh, each lab. So uh, next week we'll start with the with the HTML lab and the CSS lab, the first CSS lab. Um, anyway, most of you I know that already showed the, the, the first lab, the HTML lab, so it shouldn't be a problem uh, for you to develop the or to, to show the the HTML and the CSS lab uh, by next week. Anyway, uh, as I have already written on the course's website uh, in the in the 11th March announcement, you should even if even if you didn't have to present the lab, you should have uh, developed the lab uh, by its deadline, as written on the Impulse uh, application. So now I think I should repeat uh, what I've just said, but in Romanian, so that if I make sure that everybody understood. Deci, din cauza că perioada de suspendarea a cursurilor se prelungește la universitatea noastră, nu mai putem să, nu cred că mai putem să preluăm laboratoare după ce se va relua școala. Și atunci uh, o să începem să preluăm laboratoare online. Vom folosi pentru aceasta fie Skype, fie Microsoft Teams. Universitatea ne-a sugerat să folosim Microsoft Teams. Uh, o, să, o să încerc în, weekend, în acest weekend să folosesc și să aleg una dintre cele două. Uh, oricum o să postez un anunț pe pagina cursului um, weekendul, acest, acest weekend uh, legat de de predarea laboratoarelor. Um, acum, uh, ca, să nu, ca să nu vă bulversez prea mult, oricum am scris în anunțul din 11 martie că uh, chiar dacă nu o să avem laboratoare față în față, în perioada suspendării, voi tot trebuie să vă faceți laboratoarele uh, așa, cum, uh, așa cum cer deadline-urile de pe impuls, chiar dacă nu, nu ni le prezentați uh, în săptămânile următoare. Deci, săptămâna următoare ar trebui să predați uh, la primul laborator, laboratorul de HTML, pe care oricum majoritatea știu că l-au predat deja, este foarte ușor, și al doilea laborator, adică primul laborator de CSS. Deci, pe săptămâna următoare ar trebui să aveți pregătite laboratorul de HTML, cine nu l-a predat deja, și primul laborator de CSS, CSS1. Um, ok. Uh, let's uh, let's jump into the course. So, um, so today I'm going to talk about uh, cascading style sheets level three and beyond level three. Um, this is the final cascading style sheet lecture. In the previous lecture, I've told you about um, about um, basic CSS. Uh, so I've told you about CSS level 1, which is which was the original CSS and it was splitted from the hypertext markup language specification. 
uh, followed by uh, Cascading Style Sheet Level 2 and uh, CSS Level 2 Revision 1 um, up to this version, up to CSS version 2.1 uh, the structure of, cas of the Cascading Style Sheet language was monolithical but starting with CSS Level 3 the specification changed to uh, to a modules specification, so it is structured in modules. It has the advantage that each module can uh, be developed and can evolve independently. Um, and as usual, many modules are already implemented in browsers uh, by the time they get to to be a W3C recommendation. Um, and because of this fact, actually. Um, the, the, the level from now on will apply to each CSS module and not to the CSS languages in its entirety. Uh, actually some modules are already level 4 like colors and selectors. If you want to read the full CSS specification you can find it at this URL which is here from W3C. Uh, there's also a summary here uh, in, at www.css3.info and the current uh, the, the snapshot of the current uh, CSS related recommendations are found at this link. Okay, enough about the history. Um, CSS level 3 has a bunch of uh, modules. Some of them are depicted on this slide. Um, we have uh, the CSS color, detailing colors that can be used um, in the cascading style sheet, so writing color with the hashtag in hexadecimal notation or using the RGB, RGBA functions or uh, HSL, HSL if you want to give the color in different color formats than uh, red, green, blue. Another module is CSS namespaces. If you have complicated CSS files that uh, want to um, that want to specify different properties, uh, you can group them in namespaces, uh, just like you do it in, in programming languages like Java or C++. Then one of the most important modules is CSS selectors. Selectors are the foundations of CSS, which are a way to specify which tag is selected, and then uh, visual properties are applied to that tags. Um, Another module is media queries, which is used in responsive design. Uh, you will see in today's lecture some examples of that. Uh, it relates to the fact that uh, an, a an HTML document should be uh, rendered correctly on different devices, having different uh, screen resolutions like mobile devices or desktop devices. Then backgrounds and borders, which relates to color, background colors or images and borders. Uh, border radius, round corners, remember. Then we have some uh, modules which, did, which, which add interactivity to CSS, um, the two, 2D transformations. Uh, it's about resizing and various uh, simple 2D transformations applied to uh, HTML containers. Then transitions and animations. You will see examples uh, at the end of this lecture. Uh, by the way, you will see a lot of examples uh, at the end of this lecture. Uh, then we have the 3D transformations module, um, flexible box layout, which is um, which is uh, a bunch of functions and properties that can be used in order to display more complex grids um, in the in the browser window. Uh, you'll see a bunch of examples at the end of today's lecture. Uh, then fonts and text, uh, grid layout, which is some way similar to flexible uh, box layout. I, I won't talk uh, much about the grid layout. And another example, image values and replace contents. Moving on, uh, in the next three slides, uh, there's a selection of CSS selectors. Most of them are introduced in CSS3. Some of them are previously introduced in CSS2.1. Um, so uh, this this four this this first four selectors uh, select an element of type E by the value of it, of its attribute the attribute uh, with the name attr 
Uh, this one selects an element uh, whose attribute attr begins with string. This one selects um, an element of type e whose attribute ends with string. This one selects uh, an element whose attribute is uh, contains string. And this one selects an element whose attribute uh, is equal to string. Then we have a bunch of selectors that select an element that's the nth child of its parent. Uh, so you can select the, the second child, the third child of its parent. Uh, you can count from the um, from the first child up, or you can count from the last child up um, using this uh, selector n last child of n. n is the parameter, the number of the child. Uh, then uh, here you can select the child uh, based on, on its number, uh, its order number in in its parent. But here you can select um, you can select a, a sibling um, based on uh, on its type, uh, and here you can also select the first child and the last child. A sibling element is uh, or an element sibling to another element is um, is an element uh, that has that has a, a common parent to the second one. CSS selector and some other CSS selectors. Uh, you can select this one, uh, the first si uh, the first sibling of its type. Uh, the element, the selected element, should be of type E. Then you can select here um, the last sibling of its type. Uh, you can select an element uh, that's the only child of its parent. You can select an element that's the only sibling of its type. Uh, you can select an element that has no other uh, inner tags. It can contain text, but no other inner tags. Uh, you can select an element um, that does not match a set of selectors here, or you can select an element that matches one of the selectors, this one. Um, then, if you remember from the previous lecture, most of the selectors in CSS are hierarchical, meaning that um, you can, um, meaning that, um, for example, this one. Uh, well, let me let me just write them here. Okay, so here I have. Well, I have an example. I have the the body um, and a s one section. Okay, one one uh, one section which contains a title, a heading, and then three articles. Uh, the three articles have the ID article 3, then article 2, and article 1. They all contain lorem ipsum text. Um, if I want to uh, select an article from section from a section, uh, although we only have one section tag here, but if I want to select an article from a section, I would write something like this. So, section an article okay and then I'll change the change some property like background red uh, and remember this is from the first CSS lecture remember that this style will be applied um, to this article uh, always to the last element so it is applied to this article that has um, that has an ancestor of type section. Okay, section can be the parent, like it is in our case, or it can be uh, an ancestor, and we can have, let's say, another div in the section, uh, and uh, the article can be inside this div. And in and in this case, uh, uh, the style, this style background red will be still uh, will still apply to this article because this article has a section ancestor. Okay, let's clear this out. Uh, okay. Uh, also, uh, notice that uh, this style is applied to the last element in the selector specification if you have a bunch of uh, select simple selectors here separated by space if you have a comma then this style will apply to both section and article um, okay 
so most of the relations uh, between tags in a selector specification are hierarchical. So if I write something like this with a space, the, so this style background red will be applied to this tag uh, if it has an ancestor of this type. Okay, but if I write something like this, uh, then this style will be applied. Um, this style will be applied. To um, only to an article tag that has a direct parent of type section. Okay, let's check this out and let's do the. Okay, let's comment first this one. We don't need it yet. Uh, maybe we'll just use the. Maybe we'll just use this background. Okay, so uh, if I'm creating a div here. Um, Okay, and I place this article inside the div. Yeah, and then I close the div here. So now I have this article that is inside the div that's inside uh, the section, and these other two articles are inside the section. So the direct parent of this article and this one is the section. So our style, because I've written uh, I've, I've used this greater sign, so our style should be applied to the article that has a direct parent of type section. So it should be applied to the article 2 and 3, and it should not be applied to article 1. Let's save this and check it out into the browser window. Um, if I have it in some other in this other tab here, let's refresh. <coughs> so you see um, this. The style, the, the color, is applied to um, to Article Two and Article Three, and it's not applied to Article One. Okay, let's go back to the examples. Um, now, if I want to, um, so most of the selector specification um, is hierarchical, meaning uh, this one should be in some sort of hierarchical uh, relation with the previous one either this one is an ans this one is an ancestor of this one or this one is a direct parent of this one but you can also specify starting with CSS level 3 um, sibling relations um, so I can I can specify something like this uh, in which case in which case um, this is is this example in which case the style would be applied to the F element that is immediately preceded by an E element. Okay, so um, let's write something like this. Uh, in the, I I can no longer use the section because section is is in a in is in an hierarchical relation to article, but. I can specify the style of an article based on some other article based on its siblings. So something like this. If I write something like this, uh, art. So the style, this style, this background color should be applied to article number three that is immediately preceded by article number one. Okay. But since article number, let's remove the div for now. So now all the articles. Are let me also indent this. So now all the articles are children of the section uh, tag. Okay, so I want our style here to be applied on article three. Okay, that should be immediately preceded by article one. And because article three is not immediately preceded by article one, because there is article two. This style won't be applied to article three. Let's check that this is the case. Okay, let's go to the browser and do a refresh. So, um, ah, sorry, uh, I've used the um, the tilde, which means that an F element is preceded, not necessarily immediately preceded by any element. So because uh, article 3 is preceded by article 1, not necessarily immediately. Uh, this style will be applied to article 3. Okay, that's why we see article 3 uh, background colored like this. Okay, 
let's change to plus this. So plus. Let's do a refresh, and now uh, the style won't be applied to Article 3 anymore because plus, um, because plus specified here, plus means that the F element should be immediately preceded by E element. Um, okay, so hopefully you've understood this. Um, uh, please notice that most of the selector, as I as I already said before, most of the selectors imply an hierarchical relationship between um, between um, the simple selectors in a set of selectors, like in this one, or if E and F are separated by a space. But these two imply a sibling, so E plus F and E tilde F, they imply a sibling relation, uh, meaning they are E and F, E and here E and F, and here E and F are. Uh, our siblings, our brothers. Okay. Okay. Let's move on. Um, moving to some other selectors. Well, this is an old selector. The star just selects everything, so this is not um, CSS level three. It's it's older than that. Um, this one, um, the has pseudo selector selects an um, an element of type E that has an element of that has an uh, an element of type F as a child because of this because of this greater sign which as you have seen in the previous slide greater sign means that F should be a direct child of E okay um, uh, there's also some uh, an insensitive uh, and sensitive comparison between the value of an attribute. So this one selects an element of type E that has an attribute with the name ATTR, which is equal to STR, and the comparison is done insensitive, case insensitive. Uh, and this one is the same with the previous one, but the comparison is done case sensitive. Uh, you can also there are also some some selectors which which deal with uh, the timeline. Um, containers, for example, this ones with, which are timeline selectors select an element in a time-dimensional di canvas. There's an example here uh, that colors the background yellow uh, of the paragraph that is currently read in a speech in a speech rendering um, document. Okay, so it colors with background yellow the, the document the the paragraph that is currently read. Um, okay. Moving on, uh, we'll we're going to move to uh, transitions, animations, and gradients. We well, a gradient is just uh, gradient just means that the the, the background color uh, of an element is varied from one specific color to another one, or we can have a set of colors and the color of color the so-called color stops, and the color is varied between the first color stop to the second one and to the third one, and so on. Um, it basically means let me. See see if I can show you an example. Uh, by the way, I'm going to show you a bunch of examples today. Uh, and all the examples, I have them locally on my computer, but I, actually they are copied from the course's website, this website. So all the examples are already present here. So let's check this. Uh, I, well, I have a bunch. I, I think I can show you. Oh, maybe let's show this one. Okay, this is a linear. We have a bunch of linear gradients. Uh, this line uh, it has a spec. It's one pixel thick. Um, so the height of this is one pixel, and the width is 100 pixels. Uh, and it's a linear gradient with various color stops. You see here blue, then there's green, then red, and some black here. And there's another there's another um, gradient which is this one. It starts with the with, uh, with this white, but I think it's it's a solid color with a F, with an alpha channel equal to zero, and then goes to this color stuff which is blue. Let's see the source of this page. So uh, it's very simple to two divs separated by a paragraph. Um, so and the style of grad one div is this one, which just, as I've told you, specifies that the height of the line is one pixel and the width 100%. Uh, so this line, 
this thin line is grade one okay and for grad two uh, we have also the width 100 percent the height is is larger so it is thicker as you see here it is thicker um, the display is a type block and we have a linear gradient which is this one let's start with this one so this one specifies that uh, the, the color should vary from the bottom to top and the stop color from the bottom from, from the bottom is this one which is this bluish yeah, so this is the sorry the, this is the red component uh, the green component and the blue component so it, it looks blue because this is the, the maximum value um, this A, this alpha, is the transparency. So 1 means full opacity and 0 means uh, full transparent. So this one is close to full opacity. Uh, the, the number should be between 0 and 1. And the second color stop is a color, I, well, it's this color, but you see here that uh, the, the transparency or the opacity is 0, which means full transparent. That's why we see it here. Uh, white because this white is actually the background color of the body tag uh, so we see through this div okay and let's see for the first gradient so this is a linear gradient it goes to the left meaning the color is varied from uh, uh, from right to the left okay so from right to the left it starts with this color let's see um, which is white, okay, so we have white, then black, then red, then green, then blue, and then white. So white here, then black, then red, then green, then blue, and then white again. Okay, uh, so hopefully uh, if you've understood. Uh, the gradient example, this gradient example, let's go back here, okay, uh, let's resume the presentation, so uh, actually we have two types of um, gradients, they are linear gradients and uh, radial gradients, the linear gradients vary in a linear fashion uh, and the radial gradients vary in a circular elliptical fashion, so first the linear gradient, the the, f the actual function is this linear gradient uh, which can be applied to the background property and here we, speci we can specify a, dire a direction and a bunch of color stops. A direction can be either to, to left, to top, to bottom, to, uh, to right or it can be an angle like this one. The color variates in an angle uh, so the side or corner is bottom, top, right, left. The color stops uh, can be written using the hexadecimal notation in red, green, blue, or using functions like we've seen previously, uh, RGB or RGB with an alpha channel. Um, but there's also different color spaces like hue, um, hue saturation and level so th th there are different color spaces that you can use in order to specify the color stop you can also uh, you can also specify a percent or a length in pixels after the color stop if you want to uh, if you want the color not to to vary uniformly between color stops so if you want the color to to have a, a larger weight in the in the final result and there's also a linear repeating gradient, uh, which is just linear gradient, but it is repeated. Uh, the parameters are in the specification is exactly the same as for the linear non-repeating gradient. Okay, let's move to a radial gradient. Um, in radial gradients, uh, the color is varied in a in a circular or elliptical fashion. Uh, it is defined by its the, the it, we still modify the background visual, the background CSS property, but this time we have this function radial gradient. It has the center position, the shape, which can be a circle or an ellipse, uh, the size, which is just the radius of the gradient. Uh, it can be given as length in pixels or percentages, um, or closest side, uh, farthest side, closest corner, farthest corner, and then the list of color stops. Um, and we also have the background radial repeating gradient with a center position and uh, well the same parameters I 
I think I have an example of this one also. I'm not sure. Let's check it out. Um, and, um, yeah, I. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I have an example, but it's it's similar. Um, okay, let's let's move here. Um, yeah, and now moving on to 2D transforms, so we can we can take each tag and we can translate it, move its position across the, the HTML doc, the the browser screen, scale it, meaning uh, reduce or increase its its size, turn, spin, or stretch. Um, and the most relevant uh, CSS property is transform with transform origin and the value of transform is a transform function or a list of transform functions. Uh, this transform functions are one of these, so translate xy which moves an element across the... sorry let's let's move to full screen. Um, so translate xy moves the element along the x and y axis. You see it here with this transparent red. You see the original position of the element, and with this uh, solid red, you see the transform element. So this one is moved. Uh, um, this element is translated is moved on the x, on the o x and o y axis on both. But we can also move it only on the o x axis like this, and we only specify the x time the x offset and we can move it on the uh, y axis and we only specify the y offset. Okay, uh, there's also uh, the transform origin pro CSS property which allows the user to change the position on transform elements, um, which basically means moves the point of origin of the transformation. We can specify that in percentages or length in pixels or left, center, right, top corners. Okay, these are 2D transforms. Uh, some other 2D transforms are uh, scale. Um, so we can scale an element on both axes uh, or only on OX axis, on OY axis. You see here an example. So um, with full red, we have the original element, and with, um, with transparent red, we have the transformed element, which is larger than the original element. Then we can rotate with an angle an element using this function, rotate. Uh, you can see here an example where the, where, uh, where the element is rotated. Uh, and then there's skew, uh, which applies um, skew transformation on both axes, this one on or on each individual axis, like this one. And you see an example here of the skew transformation. And there's also a general transformation which is specified like you do in graphics in OpenGL or WebGL and you can specify the transformation uh, using a matrix. Actually all these transformations, uh, as you know if you studied a little bit um, game development or graphics, you know that each transformation is actually translated to matrix operation. Uh, to a matrix operation. So this one is just general transform. So these are the 2D transforms that we can use in CSS. We have 3D transforms, uh, which, well, which applies 3D transform to the elements. Uh, the, the important property that CSS property that we change is transform. Uh, the same as for 2D transforms, but the functions are different. So this transform property is followed by a list of 3D transform functions and these functions are different than the one applied for 2D transforms. Um, we have uh, or yeah we have this 3D uh, 3D transform functions translate 3D where we have the third axis also so x y z we can have the translate on each separate axis we have the scale 3D and we have the rotate, and then we have the perspective and the general uh, 3D transformation. Okay, Wait, so we can have something like this as you see in the picture. Uh, some other important properties are transform origin, which is the same as for 2D transform. Then we have the transform style, which is either flat or preserved 3D. Um, 
which means that a nested child will not preserve its, pos its 3D position in the flat uh, if we use the flat value or it will preserve its position if we write preserve 3D. Um, then we have perspective um, which can be none or a number how many pixels the element is placed from the viewport uh, I'll talk about the viewport later on today and then perspective which defines the views x and y axis for nested elements um, this 3D transforms are actually used in this sort of Microsoft PowerPoint that I developed in, uh, in CSS and JavaScript so the this I don't know this this presentation tool that I'm using in order to show you the to show you this this lecture. So uh, this one is developed by me in JavaScript and CSS, and the transition from one slide to another is done in CSS using 3D transforms. Okay, like this. Let's see it here. So you see it here. Okay, this transition is done in CSS. Okay, let's move on. So these are the 3D transforms. Um, let's move on to animations. So we have, uh, let's call them simple animations uh, using transitions. And then we have more complicated animations using um, using uh, the animation uh, proper, CSS property. Okay, what, what this does is add uh, effects um, when changing from a style to another one. So, uh, they sort of add, together with the hover tag, they add interactivity to CSS, um, which is just simple interactivity, and this is actually more powerful and more complex in JavaScript, and we'll talk later about JavaScript. Um, so usually when the mouse is, is over an element, you can add effects, um, uh, you can change the style, the current style of the element to another one and add effect to this change. Uh, just like in Flash or Java, well not like that, but in a simple way, uh, similar to the way it's done in Flash and JavaScript, but Flash and JavaScript are much more powerful than CSS. Um, the CSS properties involved are transition property, transition duration, transition delay, uh, transition timing, a function and uh, there's also a us for other uh, properties in CSS there's also a shorthand notation transition where we can specify all these separate properties just like you do it for borders or paddings or margin and so on so the transition property is a comma separated list of property names uh, to which the transition is applied the duration to specify how long it takes for the transition to complete if you write a uh, if you write uh, a larger value then it will change um, slowly then the transition delay you can specify a delay that should be so an, a time interval that should pass after the transition is started uh, like here so one you wait one second and then the transition is applied and the transition timing function which can define the speed of the transition uh, by default it is linear meaning as time goes by the transition is applied but you can specify using is in is out you can specify that the first part of the transition should be executed uh, faster and the second one slower or the inverse one or you can have several I don't know time intervals applied to the transition and the transition is a shortened property for the above properties uh, uh, some examples um, we have here a div and when the so the style of the div uh, is this one which specifies the width, so that the, the 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 width is changed, uh, and the duration is five seconds. And when the mouse is over the div, the width changes to 100 pixels from the previous width, which is not specified here. Uh, but I'll show you in the example. Uh, and we can also here we only transition the width property, or we can we only um, apply effects to the width property. Uh, but here we have, so we specify the width, we say that transition should change the width in 3 seconds and should transform um, this div in 3 seconds. And so the width changes from 20 pixels, when the mouse is, o when the mouse is over the div the width changes to 100 pixels and um, the element is rotated 90 degrees. This is, uh, this is the transform property. So it specifies here that 
uh, effects are applied to the width property uh, in three seconds. So, and the animation takes three seconds for the width, and uh, the effect is applied also to the transform property, which is specified here. And the effect takes three seconds. Um, let's let me show you. Uh, let me show you some examples. So here. I think this one um, transitions okay so when the mouse is over this one the width of the element changes okay uh, you, s you see that it changes slowly uh, at the end and faster at the beginning I think or maybe it's just an illusion uh, and the second example where we rotate this and we also change the width of the element. So we rotate it and then we change the width. Let me let me show you the source code. So we have this first div, which is div1, and the second div. Uh, actually, we have a div called parent2, and inside this one we have the second div. Okay? So first, the first animation, this one is applied here. Okay, so we have the div, which specified that the width is 300 pixels, the background color is red, and we want to transition to apply effect on the width property and the transition should take 10 seconds so when the mouse is over div1 the width should change to 100 pixels from so from 300 pixels to 100 pixels and because there's no uh, specification of um, there's no there's no specification of the um, transition timing function here. Uh, we can see that it was just an illusion, the fact that I thought that the first part of transformation happens uh, faster than the second one. Okay, so again, if the mouse is over this one, uh, the width of the element is reduced. And when the mouse is out, it's not over this one, the width is is increased again. Um, okay, so these are transitions, CSS transitions. Let's move on with the presentation. Uh, transitions are simple animations and then there's more complex animations that are realized using the, the following CSS property uh, keyframes which is the most important one uh, which defines the frames of the animation uh, maybe I'll just uh, I'll just maybe it's better to move to the example code and then come back to with the explanations I think you'll understand better um, so this is an example which specifies uh, that this is an animation named name of animation and um, here specifies uh, this one selects a frame uh, actually a set of frames of the animation and here uh, the, the various properties of HTML containers are changed here and here and the keyframe selector is either from um, from or to uh, 0% or 100% uh, it's a percent of the animation and the duration is from 0 to 100% uh, and the property is a CSS property let me see if I have an example yeah I have an example here uh, so I'm defining an animation called move um, and uh, this animation is applied to this div uh, through this animation property it takes 5 seconds so I I'm specifying here for the animation that uh, in the beginning at percent zero in the beginning of the animation uh, the left property of this div should be 100 pixels and at 40% the left should change to 130 pixels and at the end of the animation 100% uh, left should be changed to 150 pixels so you see here that in this animation actually the element is moved because the left position is set to different values for this element. Uh, also notice that in order to actually move we should we should have set here the position absolute or position relative but it shouldn't be um, or 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 fixed but it shouldn't be 
it shouldn't be the default the default position which is position static i'll I'll show you I'll show you an ex an actual example I, maybe it's this example uh, I'll show you how it works um, let's go back here animations if I'm hovering with the mouse uh, above this div you see that it moves from left to right and if I'm hovering out the, the div comes back to the initial position okay the source is this one yeah so I have it's it's basically the example that's presented on the slide I have this div with the, the id div 1 and then um, I set here the properties of the div so besides left top which defines the initial position background color and the width which is 500 pixels very important it's the position which should be something different than static in our case it's absolute so all the left and top are so the, the left and top properties are um, are set uh, with respect to the top and left properties of the of the body of the body element and you see here that when the mouse is over the div i apply this animation called move for 12 seconds and here uh, it's the animation is defined so in the beginning of the animation the left property is set to this one and at 30 percent it moves with 130 pixels to the right and at the end of the animation it's located at 250 pixels to the right so this is basically the animation you saw in the slides let's close this one and go back here okay full screen again so now after I'm sh I've shown you an example of um, how we use CSS animations uh, I should go back and quickly explain all the properties um, the keyframes define the, the animation the animation is a shortened property for all these values we have the animation name that defines the animation name, the duration, the timing function, which is very similar to the timing functions for 2D transformations and transitions. So whether it is linear, is in, is out, and so on. The delay, whether if we want to, if we want the animation to start after a specific um, time interval, a delay interval. The animation iteration count. The animation can be run from the start to the end. Then it can be repeated, starting again infinitely or a number of times the animation direction the animation can be played from the start to the end or from the end to the start or the reverse of the previous play um, direction the animation play state is uh, telling us whether the, the animation is running or pausing or it's paused and uh, again the animation is just a shortened property for all these CSS properties, just like we have border for all the border top, border left, border bottom, border right, and margin, and so on, and padding. This is the example, yeah. a specific example. Now we can we can structure our document into several columns using this CSS properties: column count, column field, column gap, and so on. This specifies the number of columns in the document. Um, the document will look like a, like like an article in a paper. So it is structured on columns. The column field specified whether uh, how we fill the columns, or balance or auto. This, this involves the space between the columns. The column gap also specifies the space between the columns. This one, column rule colors, specifies the border color of a column, the border style, this one, and the border width uh, of a column. Column span, whether a, just like for the HTML tables, whether a column spans over several columns, column width, and uh, short, of course, a sharp and property columns for all the above CSS properties. So if you want to set all the above CSS properties using only one simple CSS property columns we can do this um, okay 
an example of multiple columns. I don't think I have uh, an actual HTML file with this example to show you on the browser, but it's quite straightforward to imagine it. So it, this div has three columns. Um, we specify here the, the the column width and the column count. Um, actually, I think it's a mistake here. It should be three. So this is the number of columns and the width of a column. It specifies the border style and the width, and it should be either two, three here or two here. It should be the same number, the same number of columns. Okay, or yeah, or uh, uh, no, sorry. I, th these are two independent examples. So here, of course, I need to. Uh, make this select a specific um, th so this one applies to a div and it specifies that this div should have three columns with various border properties and this one applies to a div uh, and says that the number of columns should be two and the width of a column should be 40 pixels okay um, Now, uh, border radius, I think you've already seen an example of border radius. This is useful for uh, creating round corners of any HTML component. You specify the border radius, actually you specify the, the radius of the, of the circle uh, in the corner, and you can specify this radius in length, in pixels, or in percent. Um, then, um, there are two uh, there are two radix values for each corner um, there are four corners top left top right bottom right bottom left and you can specify the radiuses like this so the radius for top left corner would be 10 pixels and 5 pixels and then for the uh, top top right 10 pixels and 5 pixels and so on uh, you've seen examples of this. So let me quickly sh uh, show you. So you've seen, uh, you've seen in the previous lecture an example of this. I think it's, I think it's this one. Although, uh, if I remember correctly, this is done with an image. Yeah, so this is done with an image, but it's it it should look it should look uh, just like this. So it should look like this with brown corners. Yeah, although this is done with an image, but I I don't have enough time to to actually write border radius, but it's it looks like this. Okay, let's go back here. Then uh, there's the box shadow where we can add a shadow to to a component, and we specify it like this. Uh, um, actually, I'll postpone this box shadow presentation uh, after two or three slides where it is discussed uh, in relation to text shadow. So let's skip box shadow for now. And we can also specify um, the border of a component. We can we can specify the border to be an image. Um, the source is actually the image used for the border. These are the parameters: source, slice, width, outset, and repeat. Slice um, selects um, offsets. Uh, select the offset of the border image from top, bottom, left, and right. Width specify the width of the border image for all um, sides: um, top, bottom, left, and right. And outset actually specifies the amount of border image that extends outside the, the border of the box. And if the image is, is not large enough as the border of the component, then it can be repeated according to this parameter. OK, background. Uh, we c CSS3 allows to have several background images for an element. So you can have multiple background images for an element. And uh, in this context, sprites are used. Um, sprites are used in order to to make the HTTP transfer more efficient. What does it mean? What does sprites mean? Well, it's actually a, 
a large image containing several other small images and those small images from this large image are, are used as backgrounds for different HTML components. Let me show you an example, I have it here, sorry. Uh, this is sprites, so I have this image that contains three small images, three icons for Google, Facebook and YouTube and I can place those images separately uh, as backgrounds for three different, uh, I think they are divs, so for three different HTML tags, HTML components. And how we do this is like this. So I have, yeah, I have three divs, this one and the next, and this one, next one and the third one here. And they all, they all use the background image because they are all divs. They all use the background image that sprite PNG. Uh, they all also have a border. And I specify the background position. So what I say here, so for the first one, the first one is the Google one. Remember, remember that in the sprite, so in the sprite, the Google image is the come on, the Google image is the first one, then Facebook, then YouTube. So in the sp I take the image from uh, position stop and left zero zero with the width 275 pixels and the height 275 and I place this as background of the first div. Then as background of the second div, I take I take it from position zero pixels on OX and on OY is 285 so that I skip the first image which is 275. And the width is 300 pixels and 300 pixels. And for the second one, for the third one, uh, the OX position, uh, the the left position is still zero, but the top position changes after adding this 275 pixel with 300 pixels. That will give me approximately this one. There's also a space between each icon, so I must uh, I must take care of that here. But that's why these two numbers, 275 and 300s, are a little bit less than than this number. Because here I have to take uh, some white space, the, 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 the separators into account. You see there's, there's, a small sep there's a small separator here between each image. Okay, so so here. So these are sprites, they are useful um, because they um, they scale the HTTP transfer instead of transferring three different images, three different HTTP requests. I only do one HTTP request, and all the all those three images are rendered at the client. So they they take less bandwidth, um, less HTTP requests passed between client the client and the server. So these are uh, sprites. Let me go back. Let me close the source and go back to the presentation. Okay. Now um, let's talk about text shadow and box shadow. So text shadow is a property that allows us to specify a text for uh, uh, sorry a shadow for a text. We can specify the shadow horizontally shadow vertically, uh, the level of blurness and the color of the shadow. You see it here, that's the color. And uh, the bulk shadow is very similar to the text shadow, it's just a shadow around the, the box, around the border of the HTML component and it has similar um, property values, uh, the horizontal shadow, vertical shadow, blur, the spread of the shadow horizontally and uh, the, the spread of the shadow which defines the thickness of the shadow that actually the width of the shadow and the color here there's an example here uh, I, I prefer to just show them in action so let's quickly let's quickly go to the examples I've used uh, shadows in, I think in this layout okay uh, the I think here there's the text shadow. Uh, if if I um, if I highlight this, you won't see it anymore. But uh, then, if I don't highlight, you see the text shadow here around each letter. So let's uh, let's inspect this. Um, yeah. So okay, and here so this is the span with the class span title, and here we can see. We can see the CSS. 
properties and we see here text shadow uh, that uh, the shadow uh, spans horizontally two pixels so you see that the shadow moves to the right with two pixels after each letter and then vertically it moves downwards with two pixels uh, near each letter then this is the level of blurness and this is the color which is just sort of black if I change this uh, horizontally I should see a larger shadow horizontally let's make it widely okay so this is a larger shadow okay and maybe we can increase also the blurness to 40 it's very blurred that you don't see it anymore um, okay so let's leave it this way so this is text shadow and box shadow you can see box shadow thing here okay. should see it here here we have um, here we have some box shadow here box shadow okay box shadow and then box shadow this is the border and then there's the box shadow and also here some box shadowing let me quickly show you uh, so panel uh, this is the this is a panel 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 and uh, the CSS is here box shadow you see 40 pixels or is oh sorry four pixels horizontally uh, six pixels vertically and this is the the spread and it's the color of the shadow if i comment this out there won't be any shadow okay so this is box shadow yeah go back to the presentation moving on um I have here um, now we should talk about CSS flex box, uh, which basically means display flex. Okay, this is the most important property display flex. What it does is very powerful, and I can um, I can place I can place components on rows and columns just like if I, if the screen of the browser is a grid is is split it like a grid and I can place each HTML component component where I want in the same line on different lines with different widths and heights so it's it's very powerful um, I'm going to show you some examples actually the previous one was an example um, this one has this one has one div with the class sorry this one has one div with the class flex div and this div contains two two children, div one and div two. And the class specifies that the display is flex. So I need to dis uh, so I need to specify I need to specify the display to be flex for the parent and all the child uh, all the all the children from this tag will be displayed according to flex. Uh, we can specify the flex direction which is column column reverse row row reverse we can specify flex wrap the justify content this is for uh this is because it, it before flex it was quite complicated to center things vertically um, not that complicated just to center things horizontally because you you, can, you could do that with margin left and margin right auto but it wasn't that easy to center things vertically but with flex it's very very easy if you want to center things horizontally you just need to specify justify content center and if you want to center things vertically in a flex container you just need to specify a line item center and that's that's it um, okay let me tell you more more about Flex, okay, and even more about flex, and then I'll show you an example. So, if we specify the flow, the flex direction to be row, which is the default one, uh, if we don't specify it or if we specify it like this, then uh, the the children of the flex container will be placed on a single row if their widths 
added together does not surpass 100 percent um, so here in this example I have this 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 yellow um, this yellow divs are yellow components are just that are just HTML components like divs and then they are placed in a flex container which is this greenish one on the same line if the flex direction is row if the flex direction is column then they will be placed like this on one column okay we can align things horizontally by specifying uh, justify content um, center which aligns them center on the center uh, we can align uh, content by specifying flex start which aligns them to the left flex end to the right space between um, space around and space evenly uh, handles the, the actual space between the, the children uh, if I if I'm use space evenly there will be the same space on the left and in between two two components in the flex container and on the, the, the right side of the last the, la the last child of the flex container okay and we can align things vertically like this uh, flex start aligns them to the top flex and to the bottom center uh, to the center vertical center stretch the, it would stretch them uh, to start on the top and end on the bottom and baseline it will try to arrange them on a line uh, even more flex you can read here okay before we go to CSS preprocessors let me quickly show you a flex example this is the flex example um, this is just a well, modern web design or current web design uh, is usually done like this uh, the large picture uh, I could have chosen a better one but this is the picture I had with my dog um, so uh, current web design uh, is based on a large large picture here a fixed header which is usually colored with a solid colored contrasting to the the rest of the colors of the document it is usually fixed meaning it doesn't move usually you have this burger menu here and then some some um, some menu items here which could have been drawn uh, better but this is just a simple example and then we have a picture uh, and then we have here like a container which has three panels they all have there's a border here or, or a horizontal row we each contain each panel has a border and then a box shadow here and then also a horizontal row and some other two panels here and then there's a footer here okay let me quickly show you the source code um, well normally for this style the, normally this style should have been written uh, in a separate in a separate document in a separate CSS file because it's quite large but I've left it here uh, because it was easier for me to actually develop the, the whole document and it's also easier to present and because I don't need to move to the second file and so on so uh, I have this header which is this header part is blue dark blue and then also this small uh, light blue and then I have this image, the image with my dog. Uh, and I have a separator, which is just an empty space for this white space here. And then I have a container which spans over these three panels. Then another container which spans over these two panels. And then a footer here, which doesn't have anything but a, a blue background. Okay, so this is main. This is this is main which has two sections or two containers one is this one to here which contains uh, three articles so one what so one article two article and three article they all contain lorem ipsum text and then we have the separator again and then we have the second container which contains only two panels two articles the articles have the class 
all the articles have the class panel this one and this one and this one and this one and then we have the footer which is empty just the background okay so again to repeat here we have the main uh, so after this fixed menu and also this light blue one we have this image then we have a separator here why this white space then we have a container here that can that contains three panels which are articles then we have this separator which is just this horizontal row uh, and then we have another container which has these two panels and then the footer okay let me show you the CSS so first the header one okay so I have here a div which contains the burger menu which is just three divs three divs three line divs displayed horizontally this burger menu this one uh, then I have three spans for the menu items about contents and miscellaneous so about contents and miscellaneous um, and then I have this other div <coughs> the header separator for this this light blue this light blue div here light blue separate so the CSS for this is this one uh, this is useful uh, so padding zero margin zero these are this these are useful uh, so that we don't see any white space around this this menu and around this image let's let's check what happens if I don't use those Inspect. Uh, yeah, body should be okay. So let's remove this and this. Okay, so you see this white space here, which is the padding of the body, which is not pleasant. Um, and also the width and the height. The width and the height of HTML and body are used so that other relative widths and heights, relative, so for example, this one, this is the width of this, of this div nav header is relative to its parent and so it's 100 percent and the, this style is applied to the nav header to the div with the class nav header which is the child of a header okay actually to this one sorry it is applied to this div which has a parent header okay and so this div says that the width is 100% of its parent. The width of a parent, which width of the parent, which is header, is also 100% of its parent. And in order for this to work correctly, I need to specify the width and the height. If I use the height uh, of the parent of header, which is body, and the parent of body, which is HTML, to be 100% and 100%, which means the whole browser screen. Okay, here the position of the header is, as I said, fixed and the width is 100%. That's why we can mm, scroll things around and this remains fixed here and overlaps other elements. The properties of the nav header, which is, which is this nav header from here to here, are the background, the color, background is that bluish blue dark blue color the, the text color the width 100% some padding and the display flex okay and here I specified that the components should be centered horizontally so I specify the display flex and the components of this nav header are the burger menu so this is the nav header the components the children of this uh, of this nav header are the burger menu and those three spans okay and in order for them to be displayed on the same line as you see here i only need to specify the width of the program menu the width of this one the width of this one the width of this one uh, it's better to use relative widths meaning percentage widths and the sum of all the widths should be not more than 100 percent in because if it is larger than 100% then the flex will not be able to display all everything on the same line it will move to a new line okay and let's see so I have this burger menu class and some spans so the burger menu class specified that the width is 25% it also has some margins and the spans located in the nav header has, have the width uh, 20 pixels and the font size this one so 20 pixels time uh, sorry 20% times 
times three because we have three spans. So one span for about, one for contents, one for miscellaneous. Three times twenty is sixty plus twenty-five is eighty-five, which is less than one hundred percent. That's why they are displayed on the same line. Okay. Moving on, uh, after the well, we have here the header separator, which is this light blue div. The header separator is this one, specified that the width is 100%, the height is 5 pixels, the background is this light blue, position is still fixed, and zero margin, zero padding. Then after that, I have this image. I don't, yeah, I, I don't think I have. I don't. I don't think I have any CSS specification for the main image. Uh, I have something for centering it and specifying the width 100%. Then I have the separator, which is this white space here after the image. So this white space. So the separator. The separator is here, specify the width of one. Actually, this is a mistake. I should have written here 100%. Uh, and the height 10% of the whole browser image. This is a mistake. But because the body is, the, the background color of the body is white, then everything looks white here. But this is a mistake. It should have been 100%. Let me also change that and update the example. So, flex. Yeah, okay, this is done. Then, we have this main which has those two sections, each section containing panels, the first one containing three panels and the second one containing two panels. Uh, for the main, I don't know if I have style. Yeah, I don't have any. Yeah, I don't have any style information for the main. Uh, I have style information for the container. The container is actually those, those two sections are containers. The first one is here. With the class container, and the second one is here. Okay, S because I'm displaying, so a container contains these three panels, and the second container contains these two panels, because I want them displayed uh, aligned center, uh, aligned to the center, and I want them displayed on the same line. Uh, I, I'm still using flex. The idea of this example is to use flex, and I'm setting the flex, I'm setting display flex for the parent of these three panels which is the container. So, container uh, centers the container and specifies that the its children should be displayed with flex and they should be not centered but the, there should be the same space between the panels and outside the panels. Um, and uh, well, you cannot see it here, but the width is 80%, also some padding here. Um, well, I've, I've told you that uh, space evenly for justify content means that this space between the, the, the between two children and should be equal with this space and should be equal to the space outside the children. Well, see that this is larger than the space between two children, but actually it's because the the width of the whole container is 80%, so it's not 100%, but we can check this out by placing a border. Okay, let me try to... So this is the first container, let me add a border here. So one pixel, solid red. Okay, so you see that this space this space is equal to this space between the two panels, is equal to this space between panel 1 and panel 2, and is equal to this space which is on the left of panel 1. Okay? And this is because the width is 80%. Yeah? So hopefully, uh, hopefully you understood this. Um, okay, the same thing happens for the, for the second section. This one. 
uh, it's still container, so we only need to specify the width of a panel. The width of a panel is 25%. It has the box shadow, I've already told you about that. It has a border and a padding. Okay. Um, yeah, I think this is this is all there is to this example. So hopefully you've understood. Uh, hopefully you've understood display flex. Previously, um, when flex was not available, you would have to do this displaying several components on the same line using either display inline, which didn't work correctly every time, or float left, which is I think I have an example here. I think this one is floated to the left and this one also to the left in order to be displayed on the same on the same line on the same row. Let me see that. So I have this div which is the left div and then I have this div which is the body div. Uh, so I have this div which is the body div. The body div which spans from that part to this one. So let's see the left, the left div. The left div specified float left, and also the body div float left, and also they specified the width 20% and 75% so that their widths added together are not 100%. So this is why they are displayed on the same line. Okay, but flex is much more powerful, much more powerful than float left. Okay, I think we'll come back to this later on, to this example. Let me finish the, let me finish the slide. Um, yeah, so after, uh, let's say beyond CSS, there are the CSS preprocessors. In large projects where you have large CSS files that use a lot of colors, a lot of uh, properties. It's very useful to think of it uh, in a modular way. So you could have, uh, you could use CSS preprocessors, which allow us to use, which extend the CSS syntax by allowing us to use something very useful, variables. So you can, or constants. You can you can use a variable with a specific color value, and you can use that variable in place of each in place of several uh, background values for a lot of components and later on if you want to change the, the color you don't need to change the, the background value of each separate component but instead you just change the value of the variables the value of the of the variable and uh, this is just a, a, a regular CSS file which contains regular CSS syntax plus some additional uh, some additional syntax specified by the preprocessor like the one I've just told you about specifying variables and using variables and then you would have an interpreter or a compiler that would take this extended CSS syntax file and it will translate it it will compile it to a regular CSS file usually th these compilers are written in Node.js uh, some exam uh, they all, they don't have the the CSS preprocessors don't allow only variables they allow functions inheritance code reusability operators if loops and so on. Uh, some examples of CSS preprocessors are stylus, compass, less, sass. I think Bootstrap, uh, the CSS framework I'm going to tell you about at the end of this lecture. I think Bootstrap is developed using using SAS, I think. I'm not sure, though. Uh, an example of CSS preprocessor, you see here, um, this is um, a selector which is specified as a function. So this one is applied, uh, this one is a function with the function name bordered with the parameter width. And it specified the border to be this color here. Uh, sorry, uh, the, the, this width here, the type of the border and the color. And uh, it also specified uh, if the mouse is over this element, this one, this means this element, then the border color should change to this one. And here I'm applying this function with this specific um, actual parameter, five pixels, uh, to this heading one. 
to the setting one tag. And also the font size is set to this global variable which is specified here. So they are not very hard to understand. Well, I cannot select, cannot select it, but this is the variable. Okay, this is an example in less. They are not very hard to understand. I won't get into too many details uh, in CSS preprocessors. Now, let's talk about responsive designs. We don't have that many slides until the end of the, of the lecture. Um, responsive web design means that uh, or involves CSS code that makes possible for an HTML document to be displayed correctly on different um, different displays on a desktop display on a tablet display on a smartphone display they all have different resolutions so how this is done is actually responsive designs the responsive design means or is equal to a set of rules um, these rules are setting the viewpoint which just sets the the width of the page to follow the screen width of the device and it sets it is set like this using a meta tag set meta name viewport content and initial scale also no zoom uh, another rule is to not rely on a particular viewpoint another very important rule is to use relative percentage dimensions so not pixel dimensions so five pixels three pixels but use instead percent percent of the parent for width and height and use flag box for the layout because it's a lot easier and there may be some times where the page is quite complicated and you simply have too many information to be displayed on a small on a small resolution like the resolution of a smartphone or or, or of a tablet in which case you should develop two alternative styles one for a higher resolution for a desktop resolution and or and another one for for a mobile resolution for a small resolution so this is um, this is done using media queries to apply different styles to large or small elements I'll show you examples uh, first responsive web designs uh, responsive web design refers I, I've already told you that it refers to using relative units so we should use percentages like this with 100% uh, there are relative units for dimension in percentages which are relative to the dimension of its parent uh, relative to the font size M which means relative to the root of the document or RAM which means relative to the parent font size or relative to the viewport um, VW, VH, VMAX, mean. I won't get into details about this one. My, this one's my suggestion is to use uh, percentage values like this one. So it's not okay for responsive design to use absolute values like pixels, points, centimeters, millimeters, inches, and so on. These are absolute units. Examples of media queries. I have here a style which applies the width 100% to this div, to, to the div with this ID. This one is applied if the screen of the displaying device is, is, uh, is maximum 500 pixel. This one is a style uh, applied if the, if the width of the rendering device is minimum, 500, so it's larger than 500 pixels. And this one is applied if the orientation is landscape. Okay. Uh, let me show you a specific example here. Let me think if I have the X. I don't think I. I don't. Or, no, I think I have this example. Uh, yeah, I think I have it. Uh, this one, yeah. Okay, so this is just um, some menu here on the left, so two containers, some menu on the left. They are color like this, the colors are not very pretty. There's no padding here, so I didn't insist it very much on the design. Uh, I just color them like this so that you are able to see them. So it has this panel, this container here and this container here. They are displayed in a row, but if the resolution changes to a lower resolution where is to do not fit on the same row. Uh, this one would move below this one. So let's 
let's decrease the resolution okay so now you see that this one like you can imagine that this is the this is the HTML document displayed on a tablet where the resolution is much lower in which case it's better to display uh, to display the menu on top and the actual content uh, at the bottom okay and if I increase the resolution again they will be displayed like this yeah this is the example with the code this is the example with this code so here I have I specified that uh, the display for the body tag is flex because the body contains so he, you see here the body body contains two sections okay section with the ID left and section with the ID uh, main and I'm specifying here that the uh, the width of the left is 25% and the background color is this pink color and the width of the main is 75% percent percent uh, and the background color is this, this bluish violet color and if the maximum width of the screen is 800 pixels so if it is lower than my 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 screen resolution then uh, the body is still displayed flex but the flex direction is column like this so it's not the default one which is row okay so they are not displayed in one single row they are displayed like this in one column and I also said specify the width of these two elements to be 100% so that one is uh, each element spans over the whole width of the screen of the screen resolution okay so this is this is an exa a specific example of responsive design uh, using media queries. Okay, told you about this. Yeah, um, the last slides are about uh, fonts and text and some interesting things. Um, typography web fonts we can use the fonts the Google web fonts this one you just need to import a CSS file this one um, and you just specify the color of the text and the font family which is in my case Yura I actually like this font um, you can see here there are a lot of there are a lot of nice fonts here And you can choose whatever font you want to. I actually like that Eura font. I've used it uh, on the impulse on the impulse application. Yeah, not what I wanted. So is this font that I'm, I'm particularly particularly fond of, and also this one. Okay. So um, I like this. Uh, this is the the Eura font here. Yeah. Okay. Fonts Google API family Eura, and I think in this style, I have this font family Eura sans serif. Close this one. Uh, full screen again. Okay, so you can use different uh, web fonts like this. Uh, I think we only have three more slides. You can use different Google icons. Uh, different icons. They are still in. They are usually developed in uh, um, vector graphics (SVG). And you just need to import the this CSS, this external file, and if you want to display this folder looking icon and this cloud looking icon, you just need to specify an i tag for italic, and the class is material icons, and the style is this one, and the name of the icon should be specified here, and it will display this folder like icon, and this one will display the cloud like icon, like this. 
Another example is using font awesome. Uh, the important difference is that uh, for Google Google icons, uh, all of them are free for font awesome. Only some of them are free. Others are you need to pay for them. This is free with the car, and it's specified like this, and you need to import it like this. You import the CSS. Okay, uh, more font awesome is also from impulse i've used this this five for html5 this three for uh, css3 uh, also this one for css3 this is x for xml this is javascript javascript php this cup of coffee for java and this windows icon okay so all of these are uh, from font awesome i've used them on the impulse application and it's quite easy to specify them. Like uh, here is just an example with the first two of them. So this one specifies the this five from HTML5. This one, this five, and this one specifies the CSS level three. This three, this one. Okay, and you also see the text here. Okay, I think this is the last slide. Um, so um, let me show you the rest of the examples. So I've shown you here the responsive design transition fix example and so on. I think what I still have to show you is the layouts and then talk a little bit about bootstrap. <coughs> so uh, this is the first layout. I think I've shown you this quickly in the previous lecture. Um, here it's just a just a regular menu page, everything centered, and a lot of gradients. These thin lines here are drawn using linear gradients. Also this one, and also this one, and this menu item. This this is the border. Okay, and here some text shadow, and then also gradient here. Um, let me quickly show you uh, the source. This is a bit outdated. Uh, these are before, as I've told you, I think on the on the on the second slide of today's lecture, I've told you that uh, usually CSS modules are implemented in the browsers before they become a W3C recommendation, and before they become a W3C recommendation, usually browsers prefix the values of various functions and properties using a specific string like this one webkit is for uh, google chrome or chromium and moz is for mozilla but this linear gradient is already a w3c recommendation so it's no need to use this anymore so th that's why this is a bit outdated this example okay um so i have this div container which has a header with a span title um, which contains the text header and um, the actual the header. So it's about this one, this this text test page header, and also this also this gradient linear gradient. We can go to so we need to check the class header and span title. Um, so span title span title is here font family, font weight, it's larger, font size, the color, and the text shadow. You are already seeing text shadow for this. And then the header, which just specified the width should be 100%, the height should be 60 pixels, and the background is just a linear gradient, uh, to top, meaning from um, from uh from the from bottom to top okay so the bottom is this sorry top to bottom so the the top is this this bluish color and the bottom is this still bluish color but it has the full transparency so that's why it is it's white here uh, let me show you the first line, which is, I think it's top, it's top, this top is this first thin line here. The, the width of the, of the header is 
and the width of this line should be 100%. So the width of the header is one. The width of the of the header is 100%, and the the width the, the width of the top is 100% in one pixel. But the header, okay, so the header is 100%. But I th then the this 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 container is 80 is 800%. So which is that container? Okay, so I have this header. Now let's check this container. So the header is 100%, but the container... Yeah, I think the container's width is 80%. So, um, okay, so 75%. So because the container is 75% and the header is 100% of it of the container, the the width of the header is actually 75% of the body, so that's why the the header does not occupy, does not stretch across the whole width of the the document. Okay, uh, maybe I yeah the the top you see here the the gradient for the top, which is this thin line. This one uh, maybe I'll show you just this. This thin line here. I've already told you that this container th with the menu is displayed on the same row with this body container because this one has float left and this one also has float float left. Um, yeah, so this is left div has float left and a width of 20%, and this body div also has float left. And the width of 75, 75 plus 20 is not 100%. So that's why they are displayed in a line. For the menu, I also have the list type none, so that there aren't any bullets. They are displayed in line, and so on. Something also interesting is this, the separator here, this thin line, which is, let me see if I can find it. It's actually this horizontal row, or the horizontal row is normally displayed horizontally, but I've changed it to be vertically. Uh, this horizontal row specified there's no border, the height is 80%, the width 1 pixel. Uh, so because I specified that the height is 80% and the width is 1 pixel, it, it looks vertical. Okay, like this. And then float left, to actually float on the... Um, to float on the right side of this menu, and then there's this the, this main container which floats to the left near this this thin line, and this thin line uh, also has uh, the the gradient, the linear gradient here. Okay, uh, since I don't have that much time, I'll quickly show you the second layout, but very very quickly, and then move to Bootstrap. I won't talk much about Bootstrap. I'll just show you some examples. I I don't really have slides, just some some simple examples. Bootstrap is quite easy to use. Okay, the second layout is this one, which uses a picture that blends into this and some box shadowing here. Uh, some text shadow is here, but it's similar to to this other example. So I still have a header with a span title. I have this their image with that image and the style is here. I won't insist too much on this example. It's quite similar to the previous one. Um, there's a little bit of work for blending this color with the, with this image. This is actually an image, a background image. Let me see if I can quickly find it. Yeah, this one. It's a background image. No repeat. Position absolute. So It's a large document. Okay, uh, Okay. let me quickly show you the bootstrap examples. So, uh, one of the most popular CSS frameworks uh, is bootstrap. I'm going to show you the examples for the, the most recent version, bootstrap 4. You just need to include, let me take uh, the first one, so in order to use Bootstrap, you just need to include this, this Bootstrap CSS file, minimize. Uh, and then you can 
draw these badges. Bootstrap is about colors. The primary color is this blue. Success is this green. Uh, info is this light blue. Warning is yellow. Danger is, is red. So these are badges. It's they are quite easy to to draw. So this badge we do this in a table. The table has table and table strip. These are also classes from um, from Bootstrap. And the way we we draw these badges are just so each badge is just a span with the class badge and badge default and badge and badge primary. The ones that are specified here. Badge badge default badge badge primary and this is how it looks like. Okay. Then we can place badges on an anchor, like this, or like this. Um, these are badges on, on an anchor. We have this badge uh, with the class badge, and this one with the class button, button, primary, and badge on the button. Then we can have progress bars, like this ones with the class progress bar, uh, the class is progress bar, ba uh, background success, progress bar stripped, so on. Background danger, progress bar stripped, and so on. Okay, the, those examples are this one. So I just specify a div with the class progress, and then another, di uh, another div with the class progress bar, and uh, the value is 40% here and for the other ones yeah for the other ones I specify a div with the class progress bar background success progress bar stripped and it's just a div and then um, the role progress bar that's it and the same for the other one uh, where I use progress bar background background info progress bar stripped so on, this is for warning, this is for danger, active, and so on. Okay, it's, in my opinion, it's quite straightforward and easy. And it's useful when developing web application that contains forms, buttons, tables, and so on. So this is about badges and progress bars. Um, Buttons, we have all sorts of buttons, the same colors, primary, success, info, warning, and danger, and link. Uh, we have different size buttons, button large, medium, small, extra small, disable, button group. Let me show you the source of this one too. Still, I include the, I include the bootstrap CSS. And now it's still a table within a container. Um, the, we have this button, the type is button, and the class btn. The class btn makes the button. And the class btn and btn default. So this one has two classes, btn, btn default. This one has btn, btn primary, also two classes, btn, btn success. And so on for these other buttons uh, where we add a button large, button medium, button small classes. Okay? Uh, they are actually specified here on the left, the classes that are used, BTM, BTM primary, BTM success, and so on. That's for this. Okay, um, then grid. Uh, you can use SM, let me close this one. You can use this for responsive design. This class specifies that this column should span over four columns, and this one should span over eight columns, so you see that this one is twice the size of this one. Okay, you just specify the class call sm4, call sm8 with, from Bootstrap. Then pagination is you can have pagination like this using page item page link pagination or page item page link like this. Uh, pa pagination small, this is smaller than this one. Breadcrumb pagination like this one. Nav like this one. Uh, nav pills like this one so these are nav tabs and this one are nav pills we can have also cards which are just like panels with various card header with background primary background success background info and this this is the header and this is the content 
Okay, and also pagination with the navbar dark. The way this is done is like here, this page. We just need to use the page item, the pagination class for the UL, page item for LI, and an anchor with page link here. Pretty similar here. Here we have breadcrumbs, item active, nav item. So, in my opinion, they are quite easy to use. You just take an example and you just modify it. Um, this is what I've done uh, for showing you these examples. So I've looked in the tutorial of Bootstrap and just used some examples from there. Tables, we have here the classes table and table stripped used here, and then table, table dark here. Table with T head dark here, table with table hover here. So I see the color changes when the mouse is over a row. Table, table border, table dark, and table with various various colors, background primary success, and too many colors here actually. Okay, and text typography, also text with the text muted class, text important success, the background, you've already seen, example of code, and so on. Um, I actually, I have some examples that are developed with Bootstrap 3.3 or 3.7, I kind of, 3.37, I kind of like more the colors of Bootstrap 3.37, it's easier, it's, it's nicer in my opinion, I'll just quickly show them too. So the colors, in my opinion, they look better here than in the, the latest version of uh, Bootstrap. Okay, also buttons. I think they are they are nicer than the buttons from Bootstrap version 4. This is just a template. Also the grid one. Similar pagination here. And the panels, pills, tables here, and text typography. Okay. So I think this was, yeah, I think this was all I wanted to show you for this for this CSS level three lecture. Uh, this completes the CSS presentation. Um, please watch and what uh, visit frequently the course's website and do refresh it and prepare the HTML and CSS uh, CSS one lab per next week. Um, I think tomorrow I'll also post the next course, which is about XML. Uh, this one describes XML languages, and I'll I think I'll post it tomorrow. Uh, I'll post the video for this course, the video presentation of this course tomorrow. Okay, so this is the end.